Hello, investors. My name is Joe Torrey. I'm a real estate investment counselor with Real Wealth. And today we're going to talk a little bit about <clears throat> how to do your due diligence on financial projections. Uh, if you're an investor, you know that whenever you're thinking of investing in a property, the seller will give you a, a set of projections to say, here's what it's going to rent for, and here's how much money you'll make. And how do you know if those are accurate? Everyone tells you to do your due diligence, but no one ever explains how to do it. And that's what we're going to cover today. So a uh, quick agenda. We'll spend a minute just to give a background on real wealth, because not all of you may know who real wealth is and what we do. Then we'll look at a typical pro forma financial statement and walk through that. And then we'll do a case study. How would you evaluate whether the numbers on that projection are accurate or believable? And then some resources for how you can learn more if you're interested. Okay, about Real Wealth, we're a real estate investment firm. We offer one to four unit investment properties to individual investors. So basically single family homes, duplexes, and fourplexes. We don't deal with uh, Wall Street uh, hedge funds or anything like that, only mom and pop investors. And we were founded uh, in 2003 in California and currently have over 70,000 members and growing so what we do is identify the best markets for investing in the United States, and then we go out there and screen home builders and turnkey providers and property managers and see if we can identify a good team that we can put together in those good markets. And when we can, we invite them into the network and they can offer properties to our members. So basically, we do a lot of quality control because there's a lot of flakes out there. And also, we educate investors like you and uh, discuss your goals and direct you to the markets that best meet your needs. So if you're interested, you can go to realwealth.com and get more information. But for today, we're going to focus on pro forma financial statements. So here's a typical pro forma that you'll see, and we'll walk through this. Uh, someone who's selling you the property, 123 Main Street in Ocala, Florida. It's near Orlando. And uh, typically, they'll tell you, here's the selling price, here's your down payment, closing costs, and your total investment. In this example, $55,000. This property is projected to rent for $1,800 a month, mortgage payment of $1,065, property taxes to $50, insurance $50, and property management expense $144 a month. Total expenses $1,509. So you'll net almost $300 a month in positive cash flow, which is about $34.92 per year. So if you look at your return and divide it by your investment, you're getting 6.3% return in your first year. And typically the first year is the worst year because that's the year you pay closing costs, which you don't do any other time. And over time, rents go up in value. So um, the, the cash on cash return is worse in the first year, and then it gets better from there. So what you should be aware of is that when the seller presents you with this, obviously it's in the seller's interest to, to make the numbers look as good as possible. So this is almost always the best case scenario, what you can expect. And as part of your due diligence, you should check these numbers line by line to see if uh, they're, they're accurate or believable. And that's what we're going to walk through today. Okay, so the first number is rent, which is projected on here as $1,800 a month. How do you know if that's accurate, especially if you've never been to Ocala, Florida? Well, what you can do is go to uh, real estate sites like Zillow or Realtor.com or Redfin. Type in the zip code of the property, 34472 in this case. Type for rent. And then type for the same kind of property, three bedroom, two bath, same square footage if you can find it. Look for comparable properties and see what the going rate is. What are they renting for? So we see here, this one here is going for $1,775, $1,845, $1,795. So the projected rent of $1,800 looks like it's in the ballpark. So it's not extravagant. If, if the sellers told you that it was going to get $2,000 a month in rent, you'd have to ask them, wh why is that? Why would somebody pay $2,000 a month when there's other properties just like it for $1,800? And uh, so you call them out on that. So that's the first thing you look for. The second thing you look for is how many properties are you competing with? And you see here in the upper left-hand corner of the screenshot, there's 36 properties just like this that are three bedroom, two bath in that zip code up for rent. So that might get you a little uneasy. You want your property to rent right away. So even though the 1800 a month rent is believable, in this example, we'll say you want to rent yours faster. So you're going to lower the rent to 1750. 
So what you would do is go into this pro forma here and change that 1800 to 1750 to reflect how you, you plan to market the property. All right, the next line item is mortgage payment. And the mortgage payment is projected at 1065 a month, but that was based on a 7% 30 year fixed loan. You talk to your lender and go back and forth and negotiate and you come up with, you prefer to use a 7-1 adjustable rate mortgage, a 7-1 arm, 5.75%. You get a lower interest rate, but the interest rate could change after seven years and only once a year. That's what the 7-1 means. So most investors don't hold their properties longer than seven years anyway. And usually you don't, if you had a fixed loan, you wouldn't pay off much uh, principal anyway in the first seven years. So you're not really losing much by going to this type of loan. But what you're gaining is your monthly payment is $130 lower. So you save yourself $130 a month, which uh, um, you can put in here in your um, projections, put your number. The caveat is that you have to pay two points of the loan amount to buy down the rate. So 2% of the $150,000 loan amount is $3,000. So the adjustments you would make to this pro forma is you would add $3,000 to this closing cost number, and then you would um, add $130 uh, to the mortgage payment, basically reduce the mortgage payment by 130. So after making those adjustments, we go on to property taxes. This is a new construction home and tax estimates are usually accurate. So in this example, we won't uh, make any changes. We'll leave the property taxes the same. But if it was a renovated home, you there's a pitfall here that you have to be aware of. Sometimes the property tax number is what the last property tax was. And that was based on the old pre-renovated uh, uh, property. So in this example here, let's say the seller bought the house for $100,000, put $30,000 of work into it. And so he's all in for $130,000 and he sells it to you for $150,000. The property tax on the form might be based on that 100K pre-renovation number, not that what it's worth now, which is 150. So the current tax rate might be higher. So what you have to do is go to the county tax assessor's website and figure out how they assess property taxes and possibly make an adjustment. In this example, we don't have to do that because it's a new home and they've sold lots of these houses and they know what the property tax is. All right, moving on to the next number, insurance. Uh, typically, the insurance is what is required by the bank. So the bank has a certain set of policies that they want you to have to protect their investment because they're using the uh, property as collateral for the loan. So they want to make sure it's insured properly. So you can talk to your insurance agent and ask if any additional coverage is recommended, hurricane, flood insurance, uh, anything like that, especially since this is in Florida. Uh, it is a, a hurricane insurance needed. Well, this this particular location, Ocala, is in the center of the state, not on the coast, so there's less hurricane risk. But you can talk it over with your insurance company and decide if you want to increase the insurance coverage. In this example, the investor decided to add an umbrella insurance policy. That's in case you get sued, somebody trips on your step and tries to sue you. So you have a million-dollar policy to cover you for that, and that's only $180 a year. So that adds $15 a month to your pro forma. So you would go on this insurance line and add uh, $15 to the insurance line. Finally, we have property management. Property management in this example is calculated as 8% of rent, which is pretty typical. But remember, we lowered our rent to $1,750 from $1,800. So 8% of the lower number, $1,750, is $4 cheaper than what it was before. So you would... Uh, change the property management number by f uh, $4 a month. It's important also uh, to understand the property manager's entire fee schedule. When they have a brand new tenant moving in, they usually charge you a month's rent just for that. And if the, the tenant renews next year, then they either charge you a flat fee or 25% of a month's rent. So understand the whole fee schedule and figure out where that uh, fits in your uh, your financial projections. So that's everything here. Are we done? Not really, because there are some things that are left out. So one thing is vacancy. Uh, most tenants stay about 30 months on average. So that means that one every 30 months, you'll have uh, a vacancy of a month. Let's say it takes a month to clean the house, clean the carpets, touch up the paint, advertise it, get a new tenant in there. 
So we're going to add 3% of rents for a vacancy reserve. That's not an expense. It's just money you set aside because you know the property is not going to be occupied 100% of the time. So you want to see how much cash flow is this property really going to net you. You have to include vacancy for that. And then the other thing is maintenance. Um, houses do have problems. They break down. The toilet backs up, whatever. Now, on new homes, everything's still under builder warranty. And the builder fixes things for free. There's a bumper to bumper warranty usually for the first year and then extended warranties for the second up to the 10 years. So for a new home, you might want to just plug in 3% of rents as a maintenance reserve in case something happens. If it's an older home, say built in the 80s, uh, you might want to add 6%. No matter how well it's been renovated, it's an older home, it's going to require more maintenance. If it's a really old home, you might want to put 10%. So it all depends. So in this example, we just subtract 3% of rents for a maintenance expense. So to sum it all up, here's a summary of our adjustments. Here's the original pro forma that we saw. We added vacancy reserve and we added maintenance reserve. Here are the adjustments that we made in the second column and then the revised pro forma on the third column. So you see we added $3,000 for our closing costs because we paid two points to buy down the interest rate. Uh, we took the rent down by $50, uh, $50 just to get it rented faster. We added a vacancy reserve, which wasn't there before, that subtracts $52. We got a better terms on our mortgage. So uh, the mortgage payment is $130 less every month. So that helps our cash flow. Property taxes we left alone. Uh, we added $15 for the umbrella insurance policy. And we uh, added in... Uh, property management, we save $4, and a maintenance reserve of $50 a month in case anything happens. But when the dust settles, we're only $17 off. <clears throat> the $130 we save with the mortgage payment pays for all these other expenses. So our expenses are down to $1,492, our monthly cash flow is $258, $3,000 a year, and our return on investment went from 6.3% to 5.3%. So how can that be? Well, the answer is the investment, the denominator and return on investment went up by $3,000 uh, because we bought down the points. So there's a percentage point decline. So you look at this and you say, okay, after I made my adjustments and did my sanity check on the seller's projections, I think this is still a very good investment. I'm happy with 5.3%. All I have, you know, because it's only going to go up from there. So I'm going to go forward with this property. Now, if you went through this thought process and determined that the property was not a good investment, then you need to have a talk with the seller to see what can be done. Otherwise, you have to pass on the property. So uh, just some uh, FYIs. The most common adjustments I see are rent adjustments because uh, sellers are usually optimistic about what it'll rent for. So you should be on the lookout for that. The second most common is mortgage payments because it varies a lot based on the type of loan you're getting, the terms, and uh, your credit score. You could have five different investors buying the same property and have different monthly mortgage payments based on the type of loan they get. And then finally, uh, maintenance expenses, especially for older homes. You can get nickel and dime. Um, but they have to send a guy out every month to fix something. So you should understand the property manager's fee schedule. So in summary, uh, you should always sanity check the pro projections, look at them line by line, trust but verify. And uh, you should get some practice by looking at multiple deals. You know, uh, have a, the seller send you a bunch of deals and go through them line by line as we just did. And uh, understand the market, understand what going rates are for rents, what things cost, and get a feel for the market. You'll notice that some sellers are consistently off in one or two line items. Like they might consistently overstate the rents or might consistently understate insurance or something like that. Before long, after you've done a couple of these, you kind of know where to look. And you can do a sanity check like we just went through in a few minutes. The benefit is that if you get comfortable with this process, when you get a deal that you do like, you can act quickly. A lot of times uh, the seller will sell you something and you need 24 hours to review it. By that time, it's already sold to another investor. And that's very frustrating. So you need to be able to move quickly. So when you find a deal you like, uh, go through this thought process quickly and decide what you want to do. So your homework assignment is to go through this exercise with a few sample properties, even if it's in a market or a property you're not interested in, just go through the process just to get comfortable with it. Uh, Cause it doesn't do you any good to learn something and then never apply it. 
you have to do this a couple of times and then when you're comfortable with it you'll be able to uh, decide very quickly what you want to do all right so that's a quick rundown on how you do your due diligence on financial projections I, if you want to learn more about real estate investing you can go to realwealth.com and get a free membership here's our homepage with our founders kathy and rich fetke you just click here where it says join for free and uh, sign up and this will get you a a new investor core curriculum, which is three 15 minute videos that'll get you started about what you need to do to get started investing in real estate. It also enables you to access 900 webinars on all kinds of real estate topics, everything from how to find a lender, uh, 1031 exchanges, how to choose a market, everything like that. We also are constantly adding to our content every Thursday at noon Pacific. We have new educational webinars on either a new market or new uh, aspects of investing. And we have podcasts as well. And if and when you're ready to invest in real estate or want to learn more, you could always talk to an experienced investment counselor like myself. I'm one of three investment counselors at Real Wealth. And we can uh, talk about your specific situation and which market is best for you and uh, put together a plan for you. And it's all free. So I hope you uh, found uh, this discussion uh, helpful. And, and demystify a lot of the financial numbers that go with real estate investing. Thanks for watching.